The transport controls are a series of buttons underneath the video playback window that may seem quite obvious and straightforward, but actually have some hidden features in them. So let's have a look. When you select a clip to load into the viewer, you'll notice first of all that you have a play button at the bottom of that. Pretty straightforward, tap to play, tap again to pause. You can scrub through the footage by tapping and dragging on the white playhead in there, or you can jump to the previous or next incident by tapping on the jump button. So for example, the jump to the left has jumped me to the beginning of the clip, but now if I tap it again, it's gonna jump me to the first marker, the second marker, the third marker, and finally to the end of the clip. And don't worry, we'll be talking about markers in a future video. If I wanna mark an in and an out point on the clip, I can scrub or play to whatever position I want, and then tap on this button to mark an in point, scrub or play somewhere else, and then tap this button to mark an out point. Now that that's marked, those are new incidents on the timeline, and so if I use the jump buttons, it's gonna jump me to the marker, and then to the end point, and then finally to the beginning of the clip. And again, going forward, it'll jump me to the end point, that marker, the out point, and so on. Now at any point, if you wanna get all the way to the beginning or to the end of the clip, simply double tap on the jump buttons. So the one on the left takes me to the beginning of the clip, and if I double tap on the one on the right, it'll take me to the very end of the clip. If the playhead is between the in and the out points and I tap on the play button, it is going to play to the end of that clip. If I tap play again, it's gonna to continue to play past the out point. If I wanted to preview the end of the out point repeatedly, I can position the playhead in between the in and the out points and then double tap on the play button. That's going to loop and loop between those regions. If there's no in and out point set, then it's gonna loop the entire clip. If I tap and hold on the jump buttons, it's gonna slowly advance backwards one frame at a time or forwards one frame at a time. And if I want a little bit more control over that, if I tap and hold on the play button and then scrub my finger to the left or to the right, I can make it advance one frame per second, two, five, 10 frames per second, and so on. I can also go back the other direction to back up. Notice all the way on the right that there's an indicator showing me how far I've advanced. 108, 109, 110, and so on. Finally, if no media is selected in the browser, then instead of the film strip for that clip, you see a preview of the entire timeline. This allows you to quickly navigate the entire timeline. Mastering these controls will allow you to navigate your clips and the timeline most effectively. Lastly, I wanna show you the timecode readout and make sure you understand how that works. When you have a clip selected, you'll see that just above the play button, you'll see a couple of numbers. The numbers in white show the current position of the playhead, so at the beginning it's at zero, and the number on the right in blue shows me the current selected duration. Now if I reset my in and out points, then we'll see the full duration of the clip at 2851, and this is a 60 frame per second clip, by the way, which is why we're seeing 28 seconds and 51 frames. And once I select a portion of the clip, then we're gonna see a duration that reflects what's currently selected. In the timeline itself, right above the blue playhead, you'll see a time there that reads out to show you the current time position of the playhead. In this case, two minutes, 16 seconds, and 14 frames.